Hey, what's going on everyone, and welcome to my complete beginner's guide for modding a Nintendo Wii, or homebrewing, whatever you prefer. So basically, this is a compilation of some of my other tutorials, just compiled onto one video for your convenience. And the main goal of today's video is to show you how to play Wii in GameCube backups off of a USB drive. So this will show you the entire process, there is no need to watch any other tutorial, this tutorial will show you everything you need to know with just a Wii and an SD card to get everything up and running with Homebrew and USB Loader VX, which will allow you to play GameCube and Wii backups off of a USB drive. So before we get on with this video, guys, you are going to need a few things. You're going to need an SD card. Any size SD card will work just fine. If you have an SD card that's over 32 gigabytes, then we're going to need to do an extra step. And you're also going to need a USB storage device. It can be an SSD, it can be a hard drive, as long as you can plug it into your Wii through USB, then you can use it. I recommend a size that will allow you to store a lot of games you want. Any size will really work as long as the game will, of course, be stored on it correctly. A size that will allow you to store any game you want, pretty much. You will also need an internet connection. This is required. If you don't have an internet connection, then how are you watching this video? But you will need an internet connection. And you will also need a Wii Remote preferably a Wii Remote that does not have Wii Motion Plus. And of course you will need a Wii. A Wii Mini will not work, but a Wii Family Edition or, you know, the original Wii with GameCube support will work. If you have a Wii Family Edition, you can still get GameCube games, but I recommend getting a USB GameCube controller adapter. It'll make things a lot easier to play GameCube games. So, once you have all of those things, we can get on with the first step. Alright, so here's a quick kind of process on how to format a USB driver SD card, because you're going to have to do both uh, to PAT32. Now, if your USB drive, or, well, if your SD card really, is under, or, you know, under 33 gigabytes, then you do not need to do this. But, if you have an SD card that's over 32 gigabytes, then you will need to download this formatter in the description. I made a little Google Drive link right here, just click that download button. Now, before we open that up, we're going to have to look at one thing real quick. So, go ahead and just open up a file explorer, and you can see right there the letter that your USB driver SD card is assigned to, basically. So, once you do that, go ahead and close out your file explorer, and we can go ahead and open up the GUI format software. Now, it's going to show something, just click yes. And we can see it right here, so I'm just going to enlarge it right here. So up here where it says drive D, we're just going to select that and just select whatever drive that the file explorer told you. And for the allocation unit size, make sure it is the second one from the bottom. Check quick format and then click start. And I'm not going to click start because it's already my SD card and USB drive is already formatted to FAT32, but that's pretty much the process on formatting a USB drive or SD card because we're going to have to do it for both because the Wii cannot read uh, USB drives or SD cards that are not FAT32. thing you are going to want to do on your Wii is what you're going to want to do is you want to go ahead and click this icon in the bottom left corner that says Wii Options. Then you're going to want to click Wii Settings. Then you're going to want to take note of the version number in the top right corner of your screen, so just write that down somewhere because you will need it later. Then what you're going to want to do is scroll right one, and then you should see internet. Go ahead and click that, and then if you haven't set up an internet connection yet, you're going to want to go to connection settings and set up an internet connection. But I've already set up an internet connection, so we're good to go. Then you're going to want to click console information. And then here's your MAC address. Go ahead and write this down somewhere because you will need it later. So just write it down and then, yeah, so we'll need it later. So now we can go ahead and head on over to the computer. Alrighty, well, one. So once you're on your computer, open up a web browser of choice. It doesn't really matter which one. And then you're going to want to type in this website, please.hackme.com. So enter that address and then you just want to click enter and you should be taken to this website letter bomb so first what you're going to want to do on this website is where it says system menu version right here you're just going to want to pick what your system menu version is so i already selected mine as you can see right here and uh so yeah so just select your menu version and then you're going to want to enter your mac address so you you took note of your mac address earlier so 
it should just just enter it here um i'm gonna blur mine out again because i don't want anybody trying to write <laughs> the homebrew channel with my mac address so um yeah all right so once you've entered your mac address uh make sure this this is checked bundle the hack me installer for me just make sure that's checked and then you want to select i am not a robot as you can see, it's doing like the verification thing. So just select all crosswalks, whatever. And then what you're going to want to do is click cut the red wire or cut the blue wire. It doesn't matter which one you pick. It, they both do the same thing. And that should download a letter bomb zip file. All right, so now we're going to open up a file explorer and it should say letter bomb zip in your file explorer. So uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight this and then we're going to extract the files. You might need something like 7-zip or RINRAR to extract them, but my computer has a built-in extractor thingy, so yeah, just extract it. Then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and insert your SD card. And then we're going to open up the letter bomb folder. Then what we're going to do is we're going to highlight everything in this folder. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit. And then we're going to drag it onto our SD card. So as a city copy to SD, just make sure uh, it says that and then just drop it and all the files should copy over to your SD card. And now we're done. So just click eject and then we can go ahead and head back over to the Wii. All right, so once we're back on the Wii, just make sure your SD card is inserted. The SD card slot is located next to the disk drive or under the disk drive, depending on how you have your Wii set up. But it's, it's easy to find. It's just under the little flat. Um, so yeah, so just insert your SD card into your Wii and you should be able to see that the SD card icon right here is highlighted blue So that means it's inserted. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to go over here and click the Wii message board icon And then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll left or right And then we should see the letter bomb somewhere. It should either be in the tomorrow folder the today folder or the yesterday folder It's random. I don't know how it works, but it should be in one of those folders as you can see, mine's in the yesterday folder. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on the bomb, the letter bomb. And this should happen. I know this looks kinda sketchy, but just keep in mind this is all safe. This is what's supposed to happen. Then this message should pop up. This is basically just saying that the software, if you bought it, then you've been scammed. You should get your money back. And it gives a little link there to basically telling you where to go if you want more details. I mean. I mean, if this is supposed to be a free software, obviously, so if you paid for it, then yeah, you should probably get your money back. Um, now we're going to wait for a little bit until uh, something pops up. It should be like a, a prompt that says press 1. Um, so we're just going to wait a little bit. And there it is. So now we're just going to press 1 to continue. Now this should pop up. As you can see, it says right there the homebrew channel can be installed. If it says cannot be installed, then by all means don't do it <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna press continue now what we're going to do is well you can install boot me if you want I'll add a little bit of protection to your Wii in case if it bricks or something but today we're just going to install the homebrew channel so just click install the homebrew channel right there and then we're going to click yes continue and it's going to install the homebrew channel then we're going to click continue and then we're going to click exit now once it exits then we should see this screen right here and it shows nothing right now but this is where all your homebrew applications will show up I have a ton of tutorials on how to get different homebrew applications if you're interested I'll leave a little eye card in the top right corner for you to click on but yeah yeah we're done so we can just go ahead and exit the system menu and once we're on our system menu, then we should see the homebrew channel. Right, everyone, so once we're on the computer, what you're going to want to do is click the link in the description, and that will bring you to this link to download a zip file. So this is the Wii package zip file. This includes everything you need um, to get USB loader GX and Nintendo up and running on your Wii. So just click this download button up here and that will download these files. So once you have those files, go ahead and open up your file explorer. And as you can see, I have the zip file right here. 
already extracted though because just to save time. So as you can see, I also have a few ROM files here. I have Xenoblade Chronicles, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and Luigi's Mansion. So I unfortunately cannot show you how to get these. All you're going to need is a few games. I have Luigi's Mansion is a GameCube game, obviously. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is a Wii game, and Xenoblade Chronicles is a Wii game as well. But the thing is, a USB drive has to be formatted to FAT32 in order to load games. And FAT32 only supports files up to 4 gigabytes. So what if you have a game over 4 gigabytes? Now Xenoblade Chronicles is a game that's over 4 gigabytes. Now I'll show you in just a minute what we backup manager will do for you um, with games that are over 4 gigabytes. So speaking of Wii backup manager, let's go ahead and open up the Wii package file. Uh, open the Wii package. And actually, before we get to Wii Backup Manager, go ahead and insert your SD card. So once your SD card is loaded up, as you can see, it says USB drive for me. So once your SD card is loaded up, as you can see, it says USB drive for me because um, I'm using a, a SD card USB reader. So what you're going to do is just take your apps folder and just drag and drop it onto your USB drive or, you know, your SD card. So let's just copy that over. And that will copy everything over there, so, and that's all we need for the SD card. So just right click and eject, and that will eject your SD card. So now what we need is the USB drive. So with your USB drive inserted, we're going to open up the Wii Backup Manager folder. And we are either going to click Wii Backup Manager Win32 or Win64. If you have a 32-bit computer, then click Win32. If you have a 64-bit computer, then click Win64. If Win64 is not working, then just use Win32. They both pretty much do the same thing. So I'm just going to open up Win64 because that's just what type of computer I have. So I'm going to open that up. And a pop-up will pop up saying, do you want to allow this app to make changes? And we'll show this on the actual recording, but just click yes. And when that loads up, we Backup Manager will load up just like that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click Drive 1. And we're going to click the inactive thing to um, our drive. So as you can see, it shows the drives here. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see the letter to my drive, which is D. So just click the one that... Um, just click whatever one works. And as you can see, uh, it, I already have Xenoblade Chronicles on here because this took like, I don't know, like an hour to transfer. So as you can see, it's over four gigabytes. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but when you first open up Wii Backup Manager and load your drive, it'll ask you to create a WBFS folder. Just click yes and it'll create one for you. So now what we're going to want to do is to transfer a file. We're going to click files. We're going to click add, click a file, and we're going to find our Wii game file. So it can be in WBFS or ISO or disk image file. If it if I if the disk image file is not working, try the WBFS. So just click whatever one works and just click that. That will add it here. So we're going to just select or just select all or whatever. And we're going to get click transfer to drive one. And that will transfer our game which is new super mario brothers we over to our usb drive so of course when you're transferring a game to your usb drive you want to make sure that it will have enough space available to for it to transfer so as you can see it might take a little while to transfer but you're going to want to have enough space on your usb drive so it could transfer over now once that is done that's pretty much it so if you go on drive one you can see we have the two games right here Literally transferring a game over 4 gigabytes is the exact same as transferring a game under 4 gigabytes. As you can see, Mario isn't even a gigabyte large. But uh, once you, we got all your games transferred over, we can go and click X. Now that's done on the Wii game side, but what about GameCube games? So before we get into the GameCube games, we need to actually do some things to our USB drive. So go ahead and open up your USB drive. As you can see, Wii Backup Manager has made a folder called WBFS. You don't really have to mess in this folder at all, but if you open it up, you see we got our two games right here and the info file. Don't mess with any of this stuff if you want it working correctly, but if we go on New Super Mario Bros. Wii, as you can see, it has the code .wbfs, that's the game. And if we go back, open up Xenoblade Chronicles, as you can see, it has two parts, so we get Backup Manager actually split the game into two parts, so it will actually work. So, that's all good, it does that automatically, you don't have to worry about that. Alright, so once you have that, we're going to go back to our USB drive. Now, as you can see, we have the WBFS folder right there. What we're going to do is we're going to recreate a new folder. Now, this folder is going to be the name of our GameCube game. So, I had Luigi's Mansion as my GameCube game. Of course, this step is optional if you don't want the GameCube game. So, uh, I'm just naming it Luigi's Mansion. And then we're going to put an open bracket just like that. 
Now, once we do that, we're going to go on our web browser and go to this website called GameTDB. I'll leave it in the description down below. So now what we're going to do is we are just going to search for our game. So my game, of course, is Luigi's Mansion. So I'm just going to search for Luigi's Mansion. And then we're going to scroll down until we find our game. So we're just going to click on that. And then we have the code up top. So I'm just going to highlight this code. Oh, no, highlight it just like that, and then I'm going to copy it. So right click and copy. Next, let's go ahead and open up our file explorer again. We are going to rename this file, and in the open bracket, we're going to paste in the code. Now, once we paste in the code, we're going to put it in a closed bracket, click enter, and there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually get the file. So we're going to go get Luigi's Mansion. As you can see, it's right here, so I'm just going to right click and cut it. Copying will do the same thing, but cutting will save space. And then we're going to go to uh, back to our USB drive, open up the Luigi's Mansion folder. Oh, I actually did something wrong. So we're actually going to create a games folder. So just create a folder called games, and we're going to drag the Luigi's Mansion folder into the games folder. So open the Luigi's Mansion folder, and then going to paste in the game. Now this will take a little while. Of course, it is a game after all, so it's going to take a little bit to copy over. But with the power of editing, boom, it's done. Just like that. Uh, crazy, right? Anyway, so we're just going to rename this file game. That's all. Just game.iso. If you don't see the file extensions showing up, then you don't have them turned on. So click the View tab in your File Explorer, and then check File Extensions, and that will turn them on. So we just want to rename that the Game ISO. Now once we're done with all of that, we are done. So we can go ahead and eject our USB drive. So just right click and eject, and we can go ahead and head over to the Wii. Alright everyone, so once we're back on your Wii, make sure your SD card is inserted, and your USB drive is inserted. Your USB drive has to be inserted at the bottom USB port, so the port closest to the edge of the Wii in order for this to work. At least by default, you can set it to both ports later. So as you can see, I have the USB Loader GX channel right here. I unfortunately cannot show you how to get this, but a simple tutorial on Google or something will work just fine. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to open up the homebrew channel. Now, before we get on to USB Loader GX and Nintendo, first thing we're going to do is make sure everything's here. So you should have USB Loader GX, Nintendo, and D2X CIOS installer. So let's go ahead and open this up. It says loading, please wait. And there we go. So it says, it just, all it does is just tell you a few things about it. Just press any button to continue. So I have a few options here. So we have a few options here. I already have COS, CIOS installed on my Wii, but just set everything you need right here. So the first thing we're, we're going to want to do is went under select CIOS. We're going to change this to V10 Beta 52 OS, not 52, 52 D2X V10 Beta 52. Set it to that. Now in the C, select CIOS base, we're going to set this to 57. Select CIOS slot, we're going to set it to 249, and the version, we're going to want to set it to 65535. Now, once you have done all of that, we're going to go ahead and press A, A again, and that will install it. So just wait a few minutes, or a few seconds really, it won't take long at all for it to install. Alright, so once that's done... We're going to press A once again. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back up to the top and make sure that's set to V10 Beta 52 D2X V10 Beta 52, which it is. The CIOS base we're going to select is 56. The CIOS slot we're going to select is 250. And the CIOS version or revision as it says here we're going to set it to 65535 so we've already done that so now we can go ahead and press a and a again and that will install it so also take a few seconds just like the previous time so just be patient this won't take too long now once that's done we're going to, have to do this process one more time so just press a and we're going to scroll back up so when it says we're going to select beta 52 d2x once again the same thing the cios base we're going to select 38 the cios slot we're going to select 251 
and the revision is 65535 once again. So then we're going to click A, A again, and that will install it. So this is going to take a few minutes once again. Just be patient, this is the last time we have to do this. Now once that's done, we're going to click A, and then what we're going to do is press B, and that will exit the D2X custom iOS installer. So we're done with that part. Now we can move on to the fun stuff, which is of course USB Loader DX. We should not have to mess with anything in Nintendo because all of our GameCube games will show up on USB Loader GX. We just need it, so they will actually show up. So let's go ahead and open up USB Loader GX. Loading resources, and there we go. So now we have a few things going on here. As you can see, we have all of our games right here. But the first thing we're going to want to do is press the 1 button on our Wii Remote. And then we are going to click OK. Just make sure everything is checked and just click OK. And this is going to see Final Missing Images. Click Yes. It's going to say Initializing Network. And then what it's going to say is it's just going to download all of the covers for our games here. So as you can see, it's going to take a little while. Um, just depending on your internet speed, of course you have to be connected to the internet for this, but it's just going to download all of the covers. If you did not insert the code in the GameCube game before, you will not be able to get these covers. I'm pretty sure that's the only difference, I don't think anything else is affected, but you won't be able to get the covers. So just wait for this to download, and once it says all images download successfully, we're just going to click OK. So now, as you can see, it only shows Luigi's Mansion up there, now that's just because for some reason, when you download game covers, your Wii game just disappears. So a way to fix this is a simple go to the homebrew channel and then go back into USB Loader GX. Loading resources. Alright, now we have all of our games back here. So as you can see, we have all of them right here. Now, for, if sometimes it says USB drive cannot be initialized or something like that, if that happens, there's one of two things wrong. Number one, you need your USB drive formatted to FAT32. And number two, it needs to be inserted in the correct slot. So if so yeah, just make sure it's one of those two things and that should fix it. So now we have a few options here, a lot actually. So let's start with this. This plus sign right here installs whatever game is inside your Wii on the disc. It will install it as an ISO right here. That's all that does. This will download the game. This will show you what you want. So if your GameCube games are not showing up, then just make sure to check GameCube games. You can also select your channels or whatnot, it doesn't matter. So click this, this will just show all the categories. Not All of this stuff is pretty much useless. You can show your games like this, which is actually what I prefer. I prefer my games being shown like this. Now we have this right here. This will show your games in a channel style like this, which I think is pretty cool. Click this, this will just show your games like that, of course. And this will like lock it. So if you want to parental control your USB loader GX, then here you go. Now if you click this game, or this disc I should say, then it will read the disc in your Wii. Now, this could do a number of things, really, so I don't know what disc I have in my Wii right now. We're about to find out. So, once we collect that disc, okay, it seems I have Mario Kart Wii in. So, um, yeah, you can load your game through USB Loader GX by clicking that disc icon. Whatever game is in your Wii. So, that's nothing much here. So, now we go into the boring stuff. So, you can just load up your games right now and play them, but for that to work, we have a few things. So, let's go ahead and click the settings. Now we have a few things. So let's go to GUI settings. This doesn't really matter. This is all up to your personal, like, want, like whatever you want. You can adjust the size and whatnot of the UI. I'm not really going to be messing with any of that stuff. Let's go into loader settings. Now we have a few things here. So all of this stuff, just make it off. It doesn't really matter. Aspect ratio. Oh, no. Aspect ratio. Just do it. You can do it to force widescreen, which I wouldn't recommend. Or you can just do it to system default. Game language, make sure that's uh, console default. Patch country strings, make sure that's off. Ocarina, make sure it doesn't matter. You can turn that on or off. I'm pretty sure that gets you like cheats for GameCube games or something like that, or Wii games actually. Uh, private server, make sure that's off. Make sure it's set to iOS 249 for both of these. Quick boot, uh, I would turn that off. It doesn't really matter. Um, none of this really matters at all. Uh, Nan saves, yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't really matter at all. Look type, we are D. All of this should be just at the default, really. So, GameCube settings. GameCube source, make sure that is set to whatever path. So, let's just do it to auto. GameCube mode, make sure that's set to Nintendo. I'm going to scroll down a bit. 
Video mode, make sure that's auto. Progressive patch, make sure that is off. Force widescreen, now listen. If you want to do force widescreen, then obviously turn it on, but I wouldn't recommend it because it makes stuff look a little weird, but you can try it if you want. Debug, off. Disk select, I would honestly turn this on. I like the look of this better. You don't have to, though. So, actually, no, let's turn that off and let me know. So, DS Mios, we could go ahead and skip this. We're not using that. Nintendo auto boot, this doesn't matter at all. Pal 50 patch, you can turn this on, but I honestly wouldn't. Wii U widescreen, turn this on, I guess. Just keep this all at default, pretty much. Triforce Arcade Mode. Now, I already showed you this in a previous, so if you're playing um, Mario Kart Arcade GP or any of the arcade titles, go ahead and turn this on. CC Rumble, that will make your controller rumble. Look, yeah. Uh, skip IPO off. Memory card emulation, make sure that's set to individual. And the memory card block size, make sure that's set to 251 or whatever one you want. It doesn't really matter, just make sure it's large enough. USB HID controller, if you want to use like a freaking PS4 controller or something, yeah, go for it, but I wouldn't. Uh, none of this matters since we're using Nintendo, so you can just click back. Hard drive settings, I don't really think this matters at all. Um, multiple partitions, I, I don't really think you should mess with any of this stuff, to be honest. Features, uh, you can just leave all this stuff at default. You can mess around with some of this stuff, I'm not really going to go through it. Uh, the loader settings is really all that matters, really. You can customize the sound. And that's pretty much it, guys. So you can go ahead and load up your GameCube games, Wii games, whatever. If something's not showing up, then go ahead and look in the paths. So, custom paths. Make sure your, um, <clears throat> my bad. Make sure your game paths are looking all fine, Nintendo loader path. Make sure that is set to, uh, what, Nintendo? Apps, Nintendo is what it should be set as. And, yeah, make sure all that is looking good so all right so that's going to go ahead and end it off for my complete wii u homebrew guide if you guys did enjoy this video if you found it helpful then make sure to leave a like and subscribe and if you need help with absolutely anything homebrew related then go ahead and join the discord server in the description down below some people myself included will be able to help you out but with all that out of the way guys thank you all so much for watching this video and i'll see you all later goodbye